Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kuda. I'm Evgeny Donsko. I'm Henry Laksan. I'm Peter Turepko and, and you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. Welcome back, tennis fans. It is episode 200 of the Game to Love podcast. We're bringing you a special episode just dedicated well, to the channel, really, and dedicated to the people who have made us get to where we are. So this is for you guys. And we're going to answer your questions in our first Q&A episode, JG. And mate, cheers. Cheers to you. This yes, is so... Mate. We can do a virtual cheers. Let's see if you can time it. No, you just go oh, this way. Oh. Sideways. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Okay. You're just oh. losing it. Oh, looks yeah. like I'm passing it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Show yeah. some magic tricks as well. But yeah, like I said, we've done 199 podcasts previously, which actually isn't true because we've done another two since. So we've done 201, 202 I before know. 200, which is a bit unfortunate. But this is, regardless of that, this is number 200. It's been a great ride. We started off in the office. We had COVID. Now we're at home. Now we're doing this. And we have some very, very good questions from you guys, the fans, the GTL family, which we will be answering today. Um, apologies right. if we miss anyone's questions. We've prioritized all of the Patreon members, so all of them have been added. Um, and I'm pretty confident I've not missed anyone else's. If I do miss one... Apologies, uh, just stick it in the live chat and we will be doing a dedicated section at the end to go through anyone in the live chat's questions and we'll answer them. I uh, just want to give a shout out to Walter there saying, hi guys, hey. happy 200. Thanks for your super chat you sent in earlier. Uh, we have received that and we've added it on and we've also added your question. So big thanks to you, Walter. Cheers to you. Hope you're having a great week, mate. Indeed, yeah. This one's a bit of a weird podcast for us just because it's what we talk about is going to be dedicated to you guys and it's going to be from your questions. So, hope well, we've received quite a few good ones as well. There's been a lot of people pouring in through the Discord and through uh, Twitter as well. I think there was a few came through. Yep. Not sure if anyone replied to my Instagram post, but <laughs> that's Instagram, uh, not really the, uh, the biggest uh, social media platform for that type of thing, I don't think, yep. but... Never mind, never mind. I'll go and check on there again during see if there's anybody's uh, responded on there. No, but, I think we've got we've got plenty anyway to go through here. Yeah, yeah. Um, for sure. But before we start that, um, we've just raised a glass, but let's just take this moment to appreciate number two hundred. Well, hey, woo, confetti's <laughs> flying, and we're loving it. Shall we get started? So the way we're yeah, going man. to do this is to avoid doing the questions in order because we have a set order and where we've sort of they've been asked. We're going to do it in a way where it's completely random. So we've got a random generator from a number yeah. of whatever it is, one to thirty, one to forty, um, and we're going to then be picking the number and the question will come up related to that number. So Indeed. take it away, Ben. Have you got the numbers ready? Yes, we have the numbers ready. I would, uh, they're all numbered uh, in our little banners. So, first one is number three, which has just come from the round. Oh, drum roll, what? number three. Let's get it up. Shall I do it? Yeah. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> you guys follow <laughs> cricket. <laughs> what a well, start. Do you want to go first? No, I don't follow cricket. There you go. This is a good, there's going to be some quick ones, but there is going to be some uh, very, yeah, no I don't like debate. cricket at all, if I'm honest. It's not really nah, it's not been my me. type of vibe. We have spoke about on watch longs every now and then. Yeah. I know we have quite a big Indian following based off some of our analytics, and we know some of you guys love the cricket. I've got some good Indian friends who love cricket as well. Um, I can respect your hustle with it. It's just not for me. I find it too slow. It's just too yeah. slow getting going. Spend too long fielding and just not that exciting for me personally. I bet it's a good day out just to go for a drink and yeah. spend the whole day drinking. But for me, yeah, I mean, some of the matches go on for about five days. I mean, yeah, don't have time for this. No. Anyway, we'll move uh, on to the next one. Shall I uh, press the button again? Right. No, next up is number five. Oh, it's not gone too 
too far down the list. Number five is, should oh. tennis move to Hawkeye Live or keep the line judges? This is a very interesting and good debate question. Uh, I'll let you go first on this one. Okay, I think keep the line judges. I am someone who is very traditional in a lot of things. I like having the line judges, but I think you should always have Hawkeye there on hand if need be. So I think you should have the line judges ultimately making their decision. A player should be awarded challenges like they do at Wimbledon, and they should then be able to challenge that so they get free challenges and use Hawkeye for that specific situation. I don't like the whole tournaments where the line judges says final. I don't like tournaments where it's just done on Hawkeye. There's no line judges. I like a bit of both. And I think Wimbledon have it down. They, they have it down to the T and exactly how I like it. Yeah, I mean, I sort of differ in my uh, opinion on this. I actually quite liked it when we had no line judges through all these tournaments when we were playing in the COVID times. Yeah. We just got to see the future a little bit of what it would be like and the tournaments ran smoothly obviously the biggest thing that we've got to speak about the one tournament that they did include them in the world number one went out for accidentally hitting one of the line judges so that's if she, if we didn't have it then he would still been in the tournament and there wouldn't have been the arguments about was that in was that out you'd well, Challenges. I can see now we've got some Djokovic fans in the chat. We've got Milan there saying Hawkeye live, 100%. Um, I'm sure all of them Djokovic fans are still very upset about the US Open where their man got defaulted. But, yeah, it's a tough one to really answer. I like having... I wouldn't scrap line judges. I like that in tennis. The part of me that wouldn't want to scrap the line judges part of it is the bit with all the controversy. Like, you wouldn't have another David Nalbandian incident with him kicking the line judge by accident. Even though I don't want to see line judges get so hurt. What is your final say, then? I think it's it's inevitable. Eventually, technology will reign supreme. So you want no I, line judges? I think it's just going to be the fairest way. You won't have any arguments. Okay, next question. All right, then. Next question. We'll get rid of that one. And the next one is number 12 on the list. Number 12 is, how did you both get started in tennis? And how serious did you get at your most competitive point? Well, do you want me to go first on this? Are we taking it in turns going first? Yeah, you, you can want... go first, mate. Well, I used to play... Well, how did I get started? I got started playing tennis from playing squash i played squash from about the age of about eight up until about the age of about 11 and then i moved into tennis because it was just a, easier there was more tennis courts around where i lived that type of thing and to get to the nearest leisure center was about 30 minutes drive or something to go and play squash so i transitioned to tennis and i got to a quite a good level playing for a club that played in a couple of leagues uh, sort of like district leagues yeah. And uh, we were the, the the champions of those leagues for a couple of years ru running for both those leagues. We played with like an LTA rating in a few of those LTA tournaments, but only ever got up to around about, I, they, they, you have to travel too far. I only got up to like a 6.1 or something. And it was just that you have to win. I think it's about, I think it's about five games or three of, I, don't know, I can't even remember. It's about three, three to five games to be able to go up to the next point. So it starts 7.2. 7.1, 6.2, 6.1. But I reckon I could have, if I'd have kept on playing, I could have potentially got could to have like made it a, a lot. Sure, nah, if I didn't, if I didn't nah. injure my knee, I would have been a professional tennis nah, a player. a lower level. He's one of them guys, I could it? have been a lower level county player. Had if I, I didn't drink I could... so much beer, I would have yeah. been a professional. Well, I, I, I did the silly thing of, I turned 18 and I started drinking and started smoking and those, those sort of things. I don't do that anymore. Praise the Lord. Well, but, you drink. Yeah, yeah I drink, <laughs> but I don't smoke anymore. So yep. uh, it, that was sort of the thing. It took over, really enjoying myself, and I stopped football and I stopped tennis, really, at, yep. at 18. And mine's a little bit shorter than Ben's answer because I've never really been into it too competitively, not been a great player ever. Um, I just love tennis. And for me, I started probably when I was younger, playing with my dad in Italy, who used to obviously have my, half my family there. We used to go to the courts. It's easier to get on a court in Italy than what it was in England. It was the public courts were usually around Wimbledon time always full up. 
And when it wasn't that sort of time where I used to live, there was vandalised all the time. So the nets were, were broken, like hanging on the floor. You could hardly see the lines of the court. So I've never really been blessed with very good facilities to play in Italy. I could, could play and it was usually on holidays. So I used to play with cousins, stuff like that. Since the last two years, I've played a lot and I've got a lot better. I've now become a goodish tennis player where I can play consistently and give players a good match. Um, kind of ever since I met you, mate, that's when I started really playing. Before that, it's very minimal. I did some stuff at uni as well. And, mate, I, I love it now. I play, I play more or less three, four times a week uh, and I'm getting better and better. Yeah, I'm impressed, mate. The, obviously, when yeah we first met, you were just sort of playing once a week or something but yeah, yeah you really upped it well done uh keep it we, keep we did it play up. that one time as well i've got to bring that up um i beat then <laughs> he was five two up i believe in the first oh, set and ended mate. up losing seven five he'll so never he completely let me forget. bottled it he'll until we play me... again that's the only result i'm well, gonna base you on well this is what i mean like a person who played their first tennis match in 10 years against someone who was playing more regularly. I thought I was pretty happy with the fact I took five <laughs> games, to be honest. The fact I was 5-2 up, I was a bit devastated. I couldn't close out a Mate, set. I was injured. I fell over on the leaves. I remember? remember you slipped. To, yeah, you slipped at one point. I nearly did your groin in. But uh, I know, mate. I absolutely... You started stepping in and actually, actually going for shots yeah. though where when it was around about i like, more confident when, when i was five two down i was like i can't lose this smuck i've got to like mate, step this up a little bit how many double faults did i do as well when it was a i've serving <laughs> twice for the set there was the double foot I, I bottled it it was a massive it was, felt like i was pliskova in uh, the final of rome you got uh, matthew there saying ben playing on clay and take him down jordan saying ben choked almino yeah. can't believe it yeah We'll be playing again very soon. The, the, the real thing which did happen was fitness. And I'm not as fit as uh, what I used to be. And I hadn't done enough fitness leading up to it. You you had so much more gas in the tank. I was I was knackered. I'm not going to lie. After seven games, I was very tired. And you took over in the in the back end. It was like Djokovic when he just takes over the gas tank. And then yeah, watch... Ben was basically Massetti in the third set against Djokovic. <laughs> Literally. I was there. I was just throwing the towel. That's it. Done. Anyway, so, next question. Yes. Next one. Let let me just get I can select that them one. for you as well, by the way. Yeah, that would be, help be more helpful for me. Yeah. Just going in and out of there. So next one is number two. Oh, staying near the, near the start here. I know. The number <laughs> two is a fascinating one. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Um, I'm going to have to start because having them Italian roots is an absolute disgrace. Pineapple yeah. should never, ever be anywhere near a pizza. It's a big no for me. I've never had it. I've never tried it. And I, quite frankly, frown upon anyone who ever has it. I'm totally with you, mate. I don't know where this came from. I don't know who decided fruit should be on the pizza, but somebody at some point did decide it, and it's not for me. What do you guys think in the live chat? Uh, do you think it should be? For me, you've got to be traditional. I've been to Italy. I've had some of the original uh, pizza. It, for me, even margarita, when you go... Uh, just to like those traditional Italian pizzeria. Like, I went to the best Italian pizzeria in Naples, and it's just a margarita, like a double mozzarella margarita. That's like nearly perfection. If you had a couple of toppings, I'm not mad at it. But if you go to Italy, you don't even really need them. It's a fruit. It's a fruit. I Why know. do you have fruit on a pizza? Do you have apples on a pizza? Do you have pears? No. Some people. Get rid of it. Get it in the bin. Sultanas. Gonna throw no. some raisins on there as well. Prunes. Yeah, mate. Get it Next off question. There, mate. Next Not even have question. Have it on the screen. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. Number eleven is next up, mate. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> it's, it's... I forgot. I said I was doing it. Number yeah. eleven. Oh, Matto saying tomatoes are fruit too. Sorry to uh, jump in there. It's oh, true. God. It's true. But come yeah, on. Tomatoes allowed. So number eleven, grunting Ooh. in tennis, good or damn right annoying. Exactly, mate. The well, this is a very interesting one because it's a very controversial topic. For me, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I have to say because I see players playing and they can train without doing it, and they can some they sometimes even forget to do it, and then they remember during matches to go. 
uh, and sometimes they're doing it to put off the opponent. If you watch, well, Sabalenka is a real tough one to watch a full match of because she just does it all the time. And sometimes it can just be nearly unbearable to watch a whole match. I, I, I find it a little bit annoying. But if it's a good player and they only do it on big shots, don't mind it. Right. I differ completely with you. I love grunting. The louder the grunt, the oh, happier God. I am. I think grunting is part of tennis. It's scientific. It helps people play tennis. I need to read up a bit more of this so I can actually provide factual information. But I can assure you... <laughs> the Q&A, mate. No, no, I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. <laughs> there's, a, there's a reason why when you play at a sort of a local club, the better the player, the more they grunt. That's oh, facts. God. I'm telling you that now. Grunting is important in tennis. Yeah, it puts I, off the opponent. I found, yeah. no, I found myself, mate. The more I've been playing and the better I've got, I've started grunting subconsciously. I didn't know I was doing it, but now I do definitely do realise I am grunting. So if we are to see it in my matches film, you will definitely hear me on there. Um, and I think it's just part of it. I can't help it. It's yeah, about, but... especially when you serve, if you're not making any noise when you're serving, I think you're not giving it enough. You need to give it a little bit more welly, a bit more passion. The grunt comes out when you want to win a point then. And if you're not yeah. grunting, you're doing something wrong. I said it. You're if too it, passive. If it, if it comes out when the time is right, but we know there's players out there that will just do no names, names, Jensen Brooksby, uh, just do a little slice cross court. And then there's a second delay and then a, uh, and then a, uh, or he hears the opponent doing something and he makes the same noise. I just can't stand it when you're doing it just to put your opponent off. It's quite no, clear. No, they don't do it to put the opponent off. I don't believe that. Mate, mate, they no, do it. No. That's naive yes, of you. Do. That's naive to say that. Uh, we've got Jordan saying Federer never grunts. Uh, no, exactly. Barbara's curious as to why I don't like PCB. Well, if that will answer that, maybe in the question afterwards. <laughs> no, we'll just focus on these questions for now. Mate, and well, look at this is why I love Elena Rybakina. Like she or Ribakina, sorry if I get the <laughs> pronunciation wrong. She plays against Sabalenka. They're both welly in the ball. Ribakina's winning points. Does it ni nice, confidently, makes no noise whatsoever. So, um, Ash Barty, another prime example. Best player on tour, no noise. So, it doesn't have to be noise. Some players say there has to be, but when you watch one of those women's matches... I like the Rafa one. <laughs> mate, he's, it's very distinct. But when you watch some of those women's matches, they used to, <laughs> Azarenka, she's won, but it's more like a firework. Like, <laughs> it's like, pew! <laughs> like fireworks going off on the and Sharapova. You get Sharapova versus Azarenka. Of course, like pew, pa, pew, pa. <laughs> so Wait, it's going I think, off. <laughs> I think we can agree. I like it. You don't like it. Let's move yeah, on but, to the next one. Yeah, we and just quickly, what... when you're doing this, Matt, are you deleting the numbers out? No, no. You don't have to delete them out. We mate, we'll know which ones we've done already. So don't no, worry because about. <laughs> mate, we're not going to be going to the. You can't. Need I to can't delete del them out every time. It's just, it's just a random generator. Yeah, but when it comes up the number, there's an option to press remove. Is there? you need to remove it because otherwise <laughs> we're gonna, it's impossible to do this. Uh, mate, well, we're going to have to keep going. Because I don't, I'm, I'm just on the one that's on uh, Google. All right, well, let's just hope we don't. Yeah, well, okay, let's hope we don't get one. But you've not done this very freshly. Well, mate, well, I'm. If I keep hitting it, surely they're not just going to ping up one that's already been done last. But anyway, we'll, we'll go anyway. Okay, next one. Exactly. We know what's been answered, says Matto. So exactly. Come on, we're no schmucks, mate. God. Anyway, next one up, number twenty-seven. Oh, going through it. I know, mate. So number 27 is, what's the last <laughs> book you've read? Oh, mate. Uh, that, mate, I'm not much of a book person. I have to I have to be, I, I think it was probably maybe Roy Keane's autobiography. And that was, we're talking many, many years ago. Uh, uh, other than that, yeah, mate, autobiographies is probably the, all, all you'll get me reading. I'm not reading like fiction, that type of thing. Yeah. How about you? Mine was fiction. Um, <laughs> so you've just completely shat on all of that. But no, <laughs> I actually read probably the last book I read, you're going to laugh at me, is when I was younger. It must have been longer than maybe about 10 years ago. I don't even know. It's terrible, really, that I've not read since. I used to, as a kid in school, I was a bookworm. I used to love reading. I used to read every day without foul. 
And I used to read before bed to help me get to sleep because I could never sleep without reading. Um, and probably the last book I read, probably the Hunger Games books. I don't know if anyone likes Hunger Games. Uh, it's fictional, but and I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. And then the film came out later on. The books were out way before. And yeah, that's probably the last book I actually read. Yeah, mate. Uh, I've always say, if you, why read the book when you can just watch the movie? <laughs> I'm one of these type of people. Save myself a few days. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that's all. That's all. I'm just more of a movie type of guy. I don't have time, especially the amount of stuff that we have to do now for the podcast. I'd rather be uh, making music or doing other bits and pieces. I don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. You got Ethan anyway. there, probably an ACCA or SEMA textbook. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I'm reading an ACCA, te ACCA textbook at the moment, but there's a few I'm not including just, that. That don't few, count. A few people just dozed off back, uh, at home. Uh, right, next one, number 19, mate. 19? Yeah, mate. Number it's a 19. Bit of a longer one. Oh. So, number 19, the case of Mackenzie McDonald sort of confuses me. Clearly, he was a tremendous player in college. But when you are that good, why not play pro in those years? Yeah, and there, there was a sort of an extension onto this, but I sort of cut it down a little bit. And it said he's apparently earned this year or something nearly half a million, they were saying, yeah. in tennis. So what, think how much money he could have been making. He was already really good. Yeah, I'm going to answer this first because it's something I want to talk about. Yeah. And I think it's good that he didn't do it. There's so much more to life than just money, in my opinion. He's got a whole career ahead of him where he can make plenty of money. You can say, oh, he just missed out on the opportunity of um, not making extra money when he was at college. It's the same argument people say when people go to university. Um, they say, why did you go to university? You could have just gone to apprentice and got, got your studies done while you're getting paid. For me, university is an experience. You've got to remember there's more to life than just making the money. It's all about memories, experiences. I'm yeah. sure at college, what he's learned from work from actually being there. We see with Cam Norrie how it developed him as a player. Yeah. It's amazing. He's made friends for life. He's learned things differently. It's adapted his tennis style, playing against different types of players, and made him the champion he is today, in my opinion, and made him such a great player. I think it's it's about grounding you as a person um, and as a character because it's more important than making a, a quick buck while you're young. Yeah, I totally agree with you, mate. I think that because the the sort of background that I played with uh, my club tennis, it's the same format as college tennis. I think it's great. I think you you play in four four players to a team. You play two. There's like doubles. You play. You play two singles, one doubles match against their say like you can you can pair it up however you want. But it's normally one and two play one and two, three and four play three and four. And then you can mix the doubles however you want and just play each other. But I thought that was great. It's such a lot of camaraderie there. You're not just there alone on the court. Yeah. Uh, and there's always a chance that you can still win things together as a team. It's not just this solo. Mate, it's good parties as well. Good yeah. life. You have a good time afterwards. Go have a have a beer with your friends. You. It's just a part of having a great experience growing up and it will build your character and make him a good player, which he is today, and make him doing well. So all credit to him. I don't think it's a bad route to, 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 to definitely take. I like Granted, it. He, could, he probably could have made a lot more money. Let's well, be honest, if he didn't go to college and went straight into the pro circuit, no doubt he would have made, what, another million or something? Maybe half another half a million, based on what he's doing at the moment, for sure. But well, we Gertz, there's more we? to life than that. There really is. Michael Gertz we spoke to, and he yeah. went back to college. He came onto the tour and decided to go back to college yeah. to to come off the tour to go and try and play his trade in college tennis try and and another important thing as well while they're there they are actually trying to uh have maybe something else that they can walk away with after tennis so a lot of these players we spoke to Jesper de Jong as well he was another one they're all they're trying to study at the same time they know that tennis will eventually end is only a select few people are the top 50 are the top 10 who earn the millions so yeah. well done to the people who have decided to go down an academic path as well and it will pay dividends i think once you and finish tennis great point there's always tennis career is very short in terms of exactly. a lifetime 
And once you've finished playing and you're t- too old to still play, it's good to have that college e- education to fall back on in your in your later years, I think. Um, yep. You've got uh, your F there saying college tennis builds your game and your character. Same case for Nori, yeah? I touched on that. Just quickly, I just want to skip over. Michael was asking about uh, when the movie came out for The Hunger Games. Did you stop reading the book? Uh, I believe I finished all of the books before the movie even came out. Mate, I, yeah. I think I only ever saw the second Hunger Games. I didn't even see the uh, the other ones. Movie is nowhere near as good. It never is. The book's always a, a lot better. Oh, God, he's one of those ones. I don't know. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. Books will always be better than movies. That's that's I a just, fact. I, uh, it's just not. It is though, man. Come I'm on, Nate, move man. on. Next one. Bookworm JG. They're gonna call him. Man, I must start reading after this. You've uh, motivated me. Oh, good. Please. It's been do. ten years. God. Anyway, next one. No. Uh, do we have eleven already? This is where we're going to fall into problems. Yeah, we did. All right. We're next one. Eighteen. What's your short and long-term goals for the podcast? And how soon can we see the GTL family tennis matches being streamed on the podcast? Mm. I believe this was given to us by one of the patrons. It's a Thanks. great question. It's George, um, isn't it? That yeah, one. it's George. Um, and let's Cheers, break George. it into three questions. So first off, what is our short-term goals for the podcast? Well, short-term goals, every next tournament, Olympics, and trying to bring you as much coverage on that. We would really like to get more stuff added into the live streams, make them more interactive. We want to get some maybe some sound boards, things like that going on yeah. in there. We also want to get some widgets and things that are working within uh, within the live streams, which can give more interactive uh, experience for you guys. But we are working behind the scenes all the yeah. time, trying to improve it before the next tournament starts. So it's yeah. always difficult. We're but... going to need a new platform, which we're trialing at the moment, but it's a bit difficult to get it all up and running. Shout out to everyone who donated uh, into our yeah. PayPal pool for that, because that is actually going towards our testing of this new system. Um, so thanks to everyone who, who donated. It really did help us with that. But all the money we get, we, we pump straight back in. We've not seen anything from, from the channel. And more sort of moving on to the next part, long-term goals. We just want <laughs> Game to Love to become one of the biggest tennis channels there is. The, the biggest. The biggest. And ultimately, if we can go to tournaments, continue with the live watch-alongs, we find them fun. It's always We watch tennis anyway, so why not do it with you guys? I think that's quite a cool selling point. And then just sort of expand the channel and just keep doing things what we love doing. We would never do anything which we don't want to do. And that's the that's the focus. But long term, I'm telling you now, Game to Love is going to be massive. Yeah. I mean, it's something that we think about all the time. We're obviously working full-time jobs at the moment. And who knows, with the help of everybody who supports the channel and the more subscribers that we get, and the channel is just going from strength to strength. I mean, uh, in my mind... I just think that we've got a very unique brand and I think we have a lot of fun. I think everybody enjoys just coming in just, just for a good time. And I think that that's what we represent. That's what we wanted to do from the start. We didn't want to take ourselves too seriously, but we still want to bring you serious tennis matches, but with a lighthearted like, uh, side to it as well. So I think we've, we've sort of achieved what we wanted to but it's gone in completely different directions, hasn't it? Yeah. We didn't even expect to, to be doing live match. Uh, oh, live. Long. We didn't anticipate yeah. to go live. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, mate. You we could know. have cut it off there, but we, we have. We've got Jordan there saying, Tennis TV, we're coming for you. Yeah, we are. Uh, and Dylan, GTL will be the biggest tennis channel. We've got yes, Tom there with a super chat. Appreciate hey, that, mate. The rock. Saying, congrats, GTL. Anyone <laughs> ask for a mini fridge update? Well, we'll, give, we'll make it brief. But currently, I've still got my mini fridge. Ben doesn't call a mini fridge over it's there. Not a mini. That's like a. Uh, that's... And Ben's still got his old an- ancient fridge, which I don't even know if it's much of a fridge. It's like a ho- it. hotel, like a uh, mini fridge you've got. Like, Mate, not... you need, you definitely need a fridge. If we ever make any money, sort of profit from this podcast, and we can take it off, the first thing Ben needs to buy is a fridge. I think we'll just sure. get. I think we need to get sponsored by a mini fridge company or something. <laughs> that could be our first real sponsor. GTL sponsored by Mini Fridge. 
<laughs> you've got Almino saying, I'll watch a watch along match. Um, I'm not even interested in just just because hanging hanging with you lots fun. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I love I love hanging with all of you guys. I think it's awesome. We've built like a community. Yeah. I know we don't get to hear you hear you talking or see your faces, but we still get all the chats come through. And nowadays a lot of life is just through text anyway, so it's pretty normal for me. Um, and it's great to hear all your guys' opinions on on certain things as well. It's cool. I, I think one of the fun things about the channel is I think we both know people who are always in our live chat who are friends of ours who don't even have any interest in tennis. <laughs> and they are they're all they they're they're sort of converted. Well, into they that don't game. have any interest in tennis before. No, but before, now that's they what do. I mean. Now yeah, they love that, tennis, so it's great. If we can transform people who didn't really like tennis into enjoying tennis, that's a job well done. Yeah. Um, but I am cautious of the time because I know we've got so many questions yeah, yeah. to get through. Let's just finish the last part of this. Uh, yeah. How soon can we see the GTL family tennis matches being streamed on the podcast? Mm. This is another thing we're working on. So if anyone's watching this and they want to, they fancy playing me in the London area or just what's it southeast of London, I'm oh. down 100%. Um, I've got a few matches lined up. You might come I'm along and play. film. I'm, I could probably, I've been double vax now, so I could well, if, probably if come and film. If you want to film them, if not, no, I'm going to be buying film. a little bracket to put on the cage and film them, and then we're going to do some commentary on the matches. I think it's going to be quite fun. I just want to quickly, before anything, just say, I am not great at tennis. So <laughs> feel free to rip into me. But just so you know, I don't. I'm not saying that I'm good at tennis. I never will claim that. It'll be a good laugh watching some of my shots because they're pretty appalling. But I do have the capacity to pull off some wonder shots. Like, how did he get there? It's got a good forehand. I give him... A no, no, but it's just a bit strange. But anyway, it'll still be fun. No doubt yeah. about it. Just, just, uh, yeah, just be, be, you'll be on the, on your bike if JG connects with that forehand. That's it. So, <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> you got to be well, careful. Anyway, sure mate. Let's move on to the next one. Anyway, just quickly, no. shout out to Slice Tennis who's joined. Hey. Another great YouTube channel. How you um, doing, Slice? How you doing, mate? And he's saying, love the game to love. Congrats, guys. Well, congrats to you. I've seen some of your videos recently. They're awesome. I always watch them. Uh, usually, yeah. if I'm honest, in bed. I don't, I don't want to creep you out too much. When I'm in bed, I'll in the shower. The stars, I'm naked every time. <laughs> no, it's it's, it's always really? good. It's a great channel, and I like watching um, your content, Steven. Yeah, so mate. Keep up the good work. Indeed, yeah. He's been doing some great stuff. Been managing to get a lot of post-match interviews with players as well. Well done to you, Stephen, on the slice. Great stuff. Uh, yeah, next question, mate. Number 25 this time. So 25. No, this is favorite all time song and movie. Oh, mate. This, the song one's more difficult for me. The movie, I think I can probably throw out there quite handily because okay. I know, well, my favorite movie, I'd probably say, is Goodfellas. Okay. Uh, I absolutely love it. Just like gangster movies for me, that's just like top of the pile. Well, I think thinking of my favourite movie is so tough. Does anyone even have a favourite movie? Does it exist? I don't know. I think there's a there's a selection. I like that sort of style. I like Lock, Stock and I've seen a lot of great... I've, I've seen so many great movies where I love them. What it's style difficult. of movie then? What, what type of movie is Mate, it depends what mood I'm in. It really depends what mood I'm in. If I feel like a comedy, I'll watch that. I like horrors, I like thriller. Um, I'm, not, I, I'm not very keen on sort of the James Bond type of movies. Do you know what I mean? Where he's always surviving everything and he just does all these cartwheels. I'm the same. I'm the same. I it gets don't, to a I don't point like where it's like, I'm bored like, of it now. Like, like John like Wick. Have you seen John, all the John Wick I don't stuff? like franchise movies. Yeah. I don't like to know what's going to happen at the end. If James Bond dies at the end, I'll watch it. Yeah. There you go. You've heard it yeah, here I think first. it's a good one. Good Will Hunting. <laughs> yeah. I thought that oh, that's a great film. I'm probably going to say Gladiator. I really like Gladiator. Yeah. I watched it when I was younger and it's just always um, just stuck in my mind. I think it's such an amazing, brilliant acting, great movie. Um, yeah. I was very engrossed in it. So probably the Gladiator is my favourite. There's one that probably isn't on many people's ra uh, radar, but it's one film which always did stand out to me. If you've not seen it, definitely give it a watch. I think it's called The Next Three Days. Uh, Russell Crowe is in okay. it. Uh, I won't give it away, but pretty much it's his wife goes to prison and he, he tries to break her out of prison, pretty much. Okay. It's just it's a very, very 
very good movie. So if you haven't seen it, go go and, watch that. And one. In terms of like trash movies, which I've just always found very funny, <laughs> like <Go on>. um, <laughs> hey, there's so many of them. I always liked the first Hangover. Oh, I feel yeah, like that yeah. was, it's just epic, man. It Brilliant. is just so it is really funny. I think even the first little Anchorman. I really like that as well. I, I thought that was funny. One of my favorites like that, uh, Van Wilder. I really like that. I okay. if, you have, if you've ever seen it's like a Ryan Reynolds, one of his first movies. Okay. Just, they're all these like it's like your American Pie style. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I like In Between Us movie. Oh mate. <laughs> In Between Us is great. That's mate, more of a TV. I saw it the other day, the second. We can't one really classify these as great movies, but <laughs> they're just funny. And on to the sort of song. This is I don't wow, know. Mate. My type of impossible. genre and Ben's are completely polar opposites. Like we like very different music altogether. That's impossible. Yeah, That's like bit, but I'll just name an artist. Like I'm a big Juice World fan. I don't know. It's a bit crazy. You may see sometimes my t-shirts on the podcast. I wear a lot of Juice World stuff. It's quite sad if I'm honest. It's kind of like emo rap kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah. mate, I've just always really liked it. I love the beats. I love the melodies. Um, Ooh. I think it's very special for me. 12 Travel just saying the People Just Do Nothing movie is out this year. That Now, that is a great show. If you've not seen that, definitely watch that program. It's like a BBC production, which is just about like a pirate radio station. They're like hilarious. And it's got like the uh, the Indian guy who manages them. Very, very, okay. very funny. Yeah. Your mate, favorite it's... song? Do you keep giving an artist mate, maybe? Uh, mate, it's too, it's too difficult to pick a just favorite an song. An artist you really like? Mate, if you're talking like recent recent years, I'd say Post Malone. I'd say okay. he'd be like the one I'd pick from recent years. I think it's just the way he broke on the scene. Some of his songs are just like go down through the they're, they're, they'll they'll be around forever. I think. Yeah. But for 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 time, God, I mean, I would say Michael Jackson, one of his, but without yeah. trying to get too much hate, there, I used to like his song "The Girl yeah. Is Mine," but. I know that there is uh, probably a lot of hate for him these days, and that's no, mate, sort of... I know, I know what you mean. Of course, with all the stuff that's come out, but Michael Jackson, you can't deny his his ability. Like his, like it is a musical talent. level talent. 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 That's the word. Yeah, it's just so high. Yeah, I don't think anyone's ever matched it. Person as an entertainer, <laughs> will yeah. anyone ever match him? Talking about singing and dancing, Michael Jackson, so. just the greatest. Yeah, just no. I don't think anyone will ever have that aura ever no. again. That, um, that 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 is that mate, all you can where... see what people were like at the concerts oh like, they're fainting everyone fainting fainting it's yeah. just yeah it's crazy special, man. and people just hundreds of thousands of people just to get a look at him wherever he is and that's just i don't know obviously sad all of the things but never never mind i think that's just like a memory from back back then i just remember yeah. from growing up it was just some uh some good songs anyway anyway on to the next one we've got number seven lucky number seven so number seven is what is the criteria oh. <laughs> for being a goat greatest of all time is it only titles or are there other factors there's definitely other factors. It's not just Grand Slams, that's for sure. Are we talking just Grand Slam titles? Are we talking Masters titles? Are we so, talking... I think they mean titles in general, but if you want to just single it out, let's just say Grand Slams, Masters, ATP Finals, just the big ones. Yeah. Whoever, I mean... wins the, whoever accumulates the most of them, would you say they are automatically the greatest of all time? I think it also ties in together because I'm going to say like, if you're number one for a long, long period, you probably have won the most titles anyway. So it sort of all ties in together. I think it probably, when it push comes to shove, you'll look at probably win percentages, you'll look at titles, and you'll probably look at who you've beaten. And if you've beaten incredible players and you've got the most titles, then you're probably the GOAT. I think so as well. I think... As much as it pains me to say, it's going to be done on who has the most titles, the best sort of percentages, the most top 10 wins, the most of this, most weeks at number one, all of these factors together, the best record against each other, like the top players dominating at certain times. I feel like it's going to be quite easy to differentiate who has been the greatest once it's all over. Once Federer, Djokovic, Nadal retire, we'll be able to see who was the person who ends at the top. 
I have yeah. a fan inside of me, and this fan wants Rafael Nadal to do something special these next three years. If he can do it, he can go down in history as that thing. I don't think it's likely. I think Djokovic is the man to... He just can't be beaten at the moment. And he's looking like his longevity is a bit better than everyone else's because his fitness-wise and physically, he looks the best. Yeah. He looks young, mate. You look at him physically, he looks like he's got another 10 years in the tank, if I'm honest. He, he looks fitter than crazy. the young players on tour. Yeah, by far. It's not close. Yeah. So in terms of that, it's hard to really say he's not going to end up the greatest of all time, if I'm honest. But I'm a fan. I'm a Rafael Nadal fan. I want to see him do something special. And I'm going to be cheering it on, no doubt, on the podcast. May uh, I know that there's probably going to be a lot of people out there saying it's what you brought to the sport more than what you did on the court. I don't know. I I just think you're always when it can, when everything comes back round and people look at this in a hundred years' time, they're probably just going to be records there that people are looking at, and they're not going to be looking at what the player looked like, what the, what endorsements they had, what effects... Well, they might say what effect they had on the sport and how they well, revolutionized. You've got, mate, you've got, if you're talking about the greatest, I think it's you'd have to look at the stats. If you're talking about your favourite, then that's that's a feeling thing. Yeah, you've yeah, got exactly. To, you've got to take emotion out of this debate, which is exactly. difficult for a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. And if you remove emotion, let's look at the stats. And Djokovic is looking more or less set to do it. This um, is... People will say Borg, don't they? Because he retired so early, yeah. because he had all of the, he sort of has the win percentages yeah. on some of the current players that are yeah. out there. And he, Borg he could have not, been. He could yeah. have been. He just retired, which is a bit of I know want Michael's it. probably <laughs> sad about that, but shouldn't have retired then. Um, yeah. It's, it's just sad, the, but it is the way it is. Can you be the GOAT? If you, I think if, it's different level of tennis now as well. It's a little bit better than then as well. I think it, it yeah, I think there is. They're hitting the ball a lot harder. There's more players to lose to now, I'd say, than there probably was then. Uh, but it, it was just an incredible talent. It's just a natural, gifted talent, and he definitely should have. Or if you're talking goats, Borg should always be in there for for at least a mention. You can't leave him out ever. Well, I'm going to leave it with this note just to make myself feel a little bit better about life. <laughs> go, on, uh, go on. Let's see if I can find it. I've lost it now. <laughs> Um, oh gosh, it's gone. That's the problem oh, with this no. chat. There's too many questions. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Eddie here. Ask Roger, who's your biggest rival? Answer, Rafa. Ask Djokovic the same question. You get the same answer. It's Rafa and Nadal. Both of them would say their biggest rival's Rafa. Yep. Just leave it on that. Well, there you go, mate. Yeah, <laughs> because he's sort of he sort of bridged the gap between. He sort of was there before Djokovic was able to start doing it. I saw an interesting graphic earlier today because i think they were saying in something like wasn't it in 2010 Djokovic had one grand slam yeah. and rafa had nine i think and federer had 17 i think that was the graphic i saw correct me if i'm wrong people in the, but that gives you an idea because it hasn't all just been Djokovic over the past 10 or 11 years rafa has been winning a lot as well but it is 19 out of 42 grand slams for Djokovic, which is a it's nearly half of them, yep. which is pretty crazy. Considering, I don't know, he got defaulted in one, <laughs> and so you could. Mate, this, is a, this is a dangerous question yeah, to yeah. ask because we could be here for a long time. I know we've got loads of questions to get through, and I want to yeah, give yeah. an opportunity at the end for people in the live chat to ask their questions. Yeah, let's it, so let's man. move on to the next one. Right, next one is thirteen. So we've gone from lucky seven to unlucky thirteen. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be any more fitting. It sort of ties on perfectly. Uh, and that is, how many majors will Djokovic and Nadal win? Well, <sighs> oh, I'm I, well, I'll go first then. I'm, I said it on the debate that we sort of had with John Silk. I reckon Djokovic has another five in him. Uh, mate, he could be more. I don't know. I say so you're five. saying now Djokovic 25. And I think Nadal... Let's give two numbers. So Djokovic, 25. Nadal? 21. 21? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Mate, this is awful. I'm going to... You're going <laughs> to gonna crucify me. I'm going to go <laughs> Nadal. Nadal, <laughs> 23. Oh, no. What's happened? Nadal, 23. Djokovic, 23. 
Oh, a level pegger. Yeah. Now, for, for me, I think Djokovic has much more surfaces he can win. He on. does, Ben, He's... but I've got to believe. I want to say Djokovic uh, 22. Uh, I want to have Nadal leading the Grand Slam race. I just want it to happen. I can't say anything else. Uh, I'm delusional. Me. I'm biased. I need it to happen for myself. But ultimately, Djokovic looks set on. If he was to take a bet, probably put £10 on Djokovic ending with the most Grand Slams, you get probably £10 and 1p back. Do you want to, the, the reason for me picking Rafa to have 21, I think he's got one more French Open in him. I think Djokovic, he has the potential to win all of them now and he could win them all once or he could, he's got multiple years to do it over. So he could still win them all or he could still win another five. But I think his body will last longer than Nadal's. And I think Nadal showed it in the match against Djokovic. If someone runs him long again, Dominic Team comes back and pushes him to five sets. I think his body gives up. And that's what I think now. I, so, so I have 23 all and you have? 25-21. Okay. So some of the chat we've got, some interesting ones. We've got Jordan, 26 Novak, 22 Rafa. Uh, the Blood Elf, 24 Djokovic, 22 Nadal. Almino. <laughs> Novak 25, Rafa 22. Does anyone have Rafa having more? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not happening. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. look at this. 12 travel 21, Rafa 22, go. Djokovic 22. Got a draw there, but yeah, it looks set. Nadal, How? Djokovic 12, is the man to beat, man. 12 travel, not having him winning any more Australian Opens. That's mad, mate. I don't know what you're up to there. He's won nine of them. You don't think he's going to try and get into double figures? I think you... I think... That's well, the who's one to say he's... there's not going to be a big player come through? Say a Medvedev or a Sitapas. In a way, it's kind of... <laughs> I, this sounds terrible. I want Rafa to win the US Open. And yeah. then I want him to win Roland Garros next year. And then in all of the other events, I want, say, Medvedev just to become unbeatable and just win, like, say, six on the bounce. I want him to win the Australian Open every year, win a few Wimbledons, win all the rest, all the other ones. Just let Rafa take the US over the end of the year and roll on Garros and then let say, Medvedev or Sitapas, Zverev, one of them guys just clean up for the rest. I'm sorry, but I think if Rafa even meets Medvedev, Sitapas at the slams, he goes out. Man. Well, we've got Gala there, so I need Rafa in. to win the slams race for my sanity. <laughs> Me too. I, will go in, I will just lose my head. I will. It's going to be a very, very sad day when they retire and, and the Dow is... Um, going to be is below Djokovic I will I will cry probably on the podcast so make sure if all the Djokovic fans that you're watching the podcast for that because you can laugh at me yeah we will uh we'll put it on repeat I'll do like a video if it's no, uh, don't. I'll do like an hour long one where I just cut and paste it over and over and some sad music in the background with some like images of <laughs> like Rafa and Djokovic next question uh, anyway yeah next question 29 all the way to the end and that was the last one that came in i think i think we had a few more but let's just try right. and... so this is a really good one this is actually from water he sent a super chat on paypal appreciate that mate and his question is how did you guys meet and decide to start your youtube channel and how did you sort out your duties so we we met i started work a little bit later than ben he was there for about five years before me i think <laughs> yeah, um, i started it. in march 20 19 and yeah, yeah. from then didn't really speak to Ben too much at the start then started talking about tennis we then used to argue about tennis <laughs> it started off very nice about tennis then it started arguments about tennis um and then we used to go drink beers at lunchtime and <laughs> it was even more arguments and one day on one of the lunch times we was having was it a pizza a pizza yeah. express I think yeah that's it and we was with someone else there as well uh the rowley um yep. and he he's actually suggested why don't you guys make a podcast and he asked yeah, the waitress I, f I forget if we all asked it i forget who asked mate, how. i was i was on it from the start i definitely yeah. was one in this podcast i've said before th this that year well when that year started i said we gotta do something and we actually just gotta just go for it we don't sit yeah, around but, no no I you didn't say it before that conversation this was the first. This is I'm talking early days in this what, pizza even express. before that. No, All this right, is no. You didn't, you didn't mention it before. So in was that, that, we asked the waitress. <laughs> she, we said <laughs> <laughs> there was no pineapple on the pizza. <laughs> I would not have tolerated that. No, we asked wasn't. the waitress, "Would you watch a podcast with us two talking about tennis?" And That's she just true. looked at us and was like, 
oh, I don't like tennis, I think. Or, and then she was like, yes, I would. So then yeah. we afterwards, I was, we said, okay, we'll do one. Mums went asked, by. Mum said went it, didn't by. they? Yeah, I think yeah. Tom did, yeah. Mums went by, nothing happened of it at all. And then I'll let, I'll take, I'll let you take it away. It was in right. Weatherspoons, January time. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was early January time. And I just said, mate, we're going to have to just do this. Uh, I just think he was, it was like, just... New Year, I'm not waiting around. We're doing it. Yeah, no, that's literally <laughs> it. I, I, Bring I, it I, in I, tomorrow. We're going to try it. I, I pretty much bullied you into doing it, yeah. which was ridiculous. And I just said, it doesn't matter. The, the first one is it's just going to be us just sitting in one of the meeting rooms at work. And we're just going to put an iPhone there and we're just going to talk about. I don't know. We'll just talk about whatever the current situation is. Talk about the upcoming tournaments. So that's what we did. We sat down. You can go back. You can watch that first episode because it is ridiculous. We're just sitting there in a meeting room. No microphones. No anything. And I, the title was, How Did You Forget About Barty? She was the world number one. And I completely forgot she was even in the Australian Open. And she's Australian. So there you go. That was... Uh, I remember I'm saying to you before we did it, I was like, man, <laughs> I don't mind talking about tennis, but I can't talk about it if there's a camera there. Like, it just makes me feel uncomfortable. I can't do it. And then it was probably pretty bad, if I'm honest, the first oh, mate, six look. months or so, seven months. But we had a lot of fun. So that's what we thought. We'll just keep doing it because we're enjoying it. And then I think what we've now developed and, and yeah, our knowledge yeah. has got better, we've been able to speak a little bit better in front of the camera because it is difficult um at times to find the right words like we're not stupid but i know you guys are probably thinking oh what's wrong with them but when you're doing this in front of the camera live it's very difficult to yeah. to track back your words you can't do that yeah yeah so you no. have to be right first time otherwise that's it <laughs> screw so the we, we learned the hard way that's what i mean at the beginning wasn't it that i was the edit for each podcast took me about four hours and this is no joke i was there trying to sync audio and video together which was ridiculous and some of the early podcasts our mouths out to out of time with the uh video and just terrible like this is what this is what happens at the start though when you're just starting out everything is a bit of a shambles everything takes longer now everything's live and it's online just when we finish so it's perfect so now there's no editing for four hours till 2 a.m. in the morning doing ridiculous things now and there's and we don't cut stuff out but like before it was about like a cut every 10 seconds yeah. we're messing things up going oh stop that we can't say that oh just cut yeah, that it was a bit of a nightmare but it's much better now the final yeah, part yeah. of the question how did you sort out your duties it was very easy it's just our skill yeah. set ben's creative i come up with sort of the ideas for the podcast I sort of do like the business side of things. <laughs> and just, I don't know, I do a lot of other different parts. They've got a bit of a yeah. weird role. And Ben you're does more creative. You're, you're like a networking guy. He likes to. Uh, yeah, I'll, do I'll like... get guests on the podcast or I'll just sort of work out things like setting up the leaderboard and um, well, got of connecting think, with people, really. Like with tennis, like the tennis app, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah, exactly. And I'm obviously, everybody knows what I do. I'm a. Yeah. I'm a do music in my spare time and just love to uh, create a track or two. So that's why I don't I, I don't mind trying to create music videos and stuff. And it's just natural just to do a bit of video editing. But luckily, we don't have to do much these days. It's just a, yeah. the old thumbnail and uh, well, the Djokovic song took yeah. time. But those those songs are worth it because well, that one's blown up and it's done really well. So hopefully they'll keep doing that. Yeah, awesome. Uh, um, there's time. a lot of questions oh, coming through, right, but we're not going to be reading them out in the chat. We'll do that at the end. So there's right. some really good ones I would like to answer. So if you can save them and send it afterwards when we have the opportunity to, that would be great. It's only fair for the people who have put their questions in before just to sort of prioritise them. Yeah, indeed. So the next one I've got, I don't know if it's been said already, was 17. No. Yeah. So 17. What do you think of people playing two forehands? <laughs> I Left like it. Right. I like it. Well, this is becoming more common. Apparently, there's some young players in America who are starting to play with two forehands. I know that Boris Becker is actually one of the legends of the sport who actually can play with forehand on both wings as well. He got trained from an early age to play with both hands. So that's an interesting stat about him. I'm all for it, mate. If you can... 
if it, it might create more interesting shots on the court, yeah. you might see them be able to play a, a deft drop shot rather than having to go with a backhand slice. You, you don't know. There might be different shots come up or you might whip a Rafa forehand up the line rather than going with a slice cross court. Who knows? Yeah, I'm all for it as well, mate. If you can do it and it becomes another skill set, go for it. I agree, mate. Right. We're going to try, try and plough through these. Number eight, next. So number eight is the most effective That's backhand. Nine. So, oh, we'll do this one anyway. <laughs> I've said it, I've done it now, and it sort of right. works well because it fits right. the forehand to backhand. Go so on, the then. most effective backhand out of Rovrenka, Federer, Team, and Shapo. So I think the way to do this, we'll just rank them from one, two, three, and four. And if I'm honest, that is so hard. That's but the so key hard. here is effective. So the question is the yeah. most effective. It's not the most beautiful. And wow. there's a big difference between the most beautiful and the most effective, but yeah, my list yeah. would be very different. Yes, definitely. For me, in this list, uh, I'm probably going to surprise you. I'm going to have Vavrinka as my top. I'm going to have Federer as my second team, and then Shapo. Exactly the same. In the exact wow. same order it's been written, <laughs> I would have Vavrinka as my most effective backhand, then Federer, then team, then Shapo. I think this could be unpopular as well. I think Shapos has the ability to be the best looking out of all of them. Ooh, I th maybe yes. Federer. I think it's hard to not say Federer, it's, but it's shredding on. What about Sitabas as well? Because he can do. A nice yeah, but I know. But with Shapo, he does like the jump with him as well. Like he's his backhand when it pull when it pulls off, mate. He can hit it with some precision and power, and it yeah. looks one of the best I've ever seen. If I'm honest, Shapo has the ability to do that. But aside from that, mate, it's not that effective. A lot of the times it goes wild and shanks it. So I'm going to keep it in that order. Almino saying correct answer, guys. It was a test. <laughs> wow. Oh. We Cheers, Almino. We passed. Pass. Let's, do num let's do number eight because that's what yeah, we're yeah. supposed to be doing. Uh, and number eight is this. Do you agree mm. that best, best of five Grand Slam finals on the women's side would be beneficial for more competitive matches? Or do you think it would only increase, increase the risk of injuries? Yeah, I mean, I'm not so much on the side of getting or going five sets for women's. Uh, I'm, I think it they're long enough sometimes the women's matches when they're three sets. They they rally a lot more. I don't think it's worth them playing five sets. I think if you're going three sets all the way through the tournament, I think stick to that. I think three sets for them. Yeah. I agree. I don't think I think keep it the same. I think three sets works better for the women's. I personally don't want to see five. I've seen a lot of people say that they do. But one thing I would say in Grand Slam finals, this is across men's and women's, what I've always said, I don't think there should be a limit. I want to see a Grand Slam final yeah, go yeah. on until the last person falls down. So whether that's going to be 70, 68 in the final of the women's, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for it for the men's as well. Let the final set of a Grand Slam be ever just don't let it stop until we have a winner right? yeah i love sure, that 100 percent. that it needs to be an endurance test as it's much only as it's now. the final yeah that's I, got to be the case for me i don't know yeah i'm annoyed that wimbledon brought that rule in i know obviously is the mahut sort of no i based. understand you have to bring the rule in for all the other rounds but not for the final no yeah yeah the final shouldn't i think People pay their money as well. They want to see the most epic thing ever. They want to see history. That it means no more records can really be broken, other than the the sort of dura time duration. There's no game dura like number of games can never be set. Now it's only twelve all tie break. So here's what it is. Never mind. They're not going to go back on it. I don't think. No. Oh, why now? Sorry. Next one. Right. Next one. Oh, it said nine. <laughs> How weird's that? Yep. <laughs> so you went to nine. Perfect. Minutes, so hopefully it doesn't but, come up again. Uh, 25. It's 25. We've done that one. Okie dokie. 15. Do you enjoy the wide open WTA field? And do you think it will close a lot more uh, at the top in the coming year or three? <laughs> weird question but basically do you think do you enjoy how wide open the wta field is and do you yes. think it's going to close the gap at the top in the coming years mm, i think it's i think it could i think it could i 
I do like the fact that it is a wide open sport on the women's side. It does make some of these draw previews much more entertaining for us. We can it, actually... look, it makes them virtually impossible to predict. Yeah, but it's it's entertaining. I like to see you you get a breakout star sometimes. Whether or not you get to see someone great again, I think the only person or there's maybe two or three people that are showing signs of greatness. Ash Barty being one of them on the women's side, she could potentially go on to win up to 10 grand slams, I think, Ash mm. Barty. And yeah. you need that consistency. Not many other people have it. Asaka, I'd say, on she could win probably 10 grand slams on hard court. But yeah. does she have the mental side of the game now? We're seeing that there's a lot of problems on the mental side. I'm I'm not so sure that there's going to be... I thought Bibi was the girl, man. Before the injury, yeah. I thought she could have been the one to sort of step out and dominate it, like can. Serena Williams did. She's had a bit of a torrid time. Doesn't look anywhere near her best. Maybe she'll return there. We could have just a young player come through, like a Savontek, who just gets yeah. better and better. Why not? But personally, I think we're going to see many more years of a wide open field in the WTA. Um and do I think it's going to be close at the top in the coming year? Potentially. We just need someone to make that real gap. And I mean sort of a mentally as well, where they just kind of are unplayable. Not yeah. seen anyone like that. Not like the men's anyway. No, we haven't at all. Right. Should we move on from that one? Yep. I just tried to delete a few of the ones out that we've already answered so that you can tell. That's number f- Number four. So number four is... Mm. Good one. Do you yeah. think team will be a one-hit wonder or will wow. he get another slam, get That's back really, to the top? That's a really good question, that one. I really like that question, whoever sent that one in. That that one's a real tricky one to, to answer as well, and I don't really want to answer it the way my mind is telling me to because my mind is not being kind to Dominic team. My mind is sort of saying there's a lot of other players coming through right now He'd be touching 30 soon, and he's got that one slam in. Will he be back to his best? I, I'm not I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure if we're going to see him challenging. A, I think he can still do it. It's just, it's a real, that is like, it's such a great question. Yeah, it's it's, like it's a great question. question because you can't answer it. It's an amazing question. I want to say he's going to be back, but I'm not sure if he will. I, so let's let's just change the question a little bit. Will he win another Grand Slam? Um, I'm going to say yes, because I'm not going to be caught up in all the recency bias. Dominic team the last few years, man, has been incredible. He's been the yeah. best player out of the all the next group. Right exactly. up there with a Medvedev, probably better than Medvedev. So, yes, I think Dominic team can win another Grand Slam. But there's questions. These questions are going to keep being asked the more he's not finding the form and he's not going for a good patch right now. No, I mean, I just hope that he rediscovers it. That's the only thing that we want. So, are you for yes him. or no on it? I think it's no. Okay, so I'm yes, I'm not. You're no, we disagree. Yeah. Uh, Almino's celebrating that he's broke your brain. Um, <laughs> definitely did do that. So well done, Almina. That was a really literally, good question. Literally did. Uh, no, uh, we had thirteen already. Do we have number twelve? So number twelve. Yeah, we already had. Oh, that mate, one. you've been deleting them off here as well. Yeah, yeah. number. Yeah, that's what I was doing. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Number ten. Number ten. Who would win <laughs> in a race, JG or Ben? JG. Is this sure, a question? But... I beat him. I'll beat him by. I don't need to be too cocky. 100 metres, I think I can beat him by a second. I thought you were going to say, in 100 metres, you're beating me by 100 metres. <laughs> <laughs> I'd beat you by at least a second in a 100 metre sprint. I th- yeah, mate, I've not done any. I have I did three runs last week, but I'm not doing sp- sprinting. It's not. I'm, I'm not, I'm not that been... fast, though, to be honest, but I think I would have a little bit more than Ben. It depends yeah. the distance. I think over f- the longer it, it's I don't know, actually, because maybe right five now I'm feeling games. quite fit. I think 5K I can beat you as well. You might, you probably would. I'm I'm, I'm having to stop maybe once or twice during yeah. it just for a little bit of a walk. I think if I get it going, I can finally... I, I will slow my up. pace recently on a 5K to about 6.4 kilometres an hour um, for a little bit, which is a bit slower. But then I'll push it back up to... When I'm going fast, it's about four fifty. Six minutes. Four what, minutes four fifty minutes. kilometers an hour. 
Yeah, that's quite quick. I don't know if I'll be able to keep up with that, to be honest. That's not the average. That's not the average. I'm, that's my fastest kilometre usually. I'm just and then getting, I'll have one, the average about 5.30. I'm just getting back into it at the moment. It's about 6.20, which isn't very good. Yeah, yeah not, well, not I do best. drop down to that, though, like in the spell when I'm struggling. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I need to. I'd, I would need to. These old knees aren't going to uh, do me any favours. <laughs> We've got the Rafa knees. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. next one. 16. 16. Who are your favourite WTA and ATP players? Oh, God, what a moody question. <laughs> uh, uh... <laughs> ATP, Rafa on the Dow. He's my favourite player of all time. I love him to pieces. Absolute legend. There's, Amazing. There's multiple players as well. So ATP and WTA players. So you can have more than one on each. Who else do you like on the ATP circuit that jumps out for you? I like Massetti. I like Berrettini. Nice. I like Diego Schwartzman. Mate, there's a lot There's a lot of people I like now, if I'm honest. Yannick um, Sinner. To a level, but he's still a little bit... He's probably below them guys, if I'm honest. Which probably surprises wow. you. Wow. Yeah. Mate, well, Karatsev, he was up there for me. He's That's like rude. Of, for that. this this year, Karatsev was Karatsev as well. Yeah, definitely on there. Uh, he's at the top of the list. There's part of me that just loves watching the the Djokovic conundrum in every match. I don't know what it is, but it draws me in, and I just know that there. It's just like watching a Rubik's cube being solved every time he's out on court. It just go. The other player goes, oh, look, I'm one set oh, ahead. Medvedev, and like, Medvedev as well. And he just goes, oh, one set ahead. Mm. Second set. Uh, uh, oh, completed it. Yeah, done. All right. So he wins in five. I don't know. Yeah, obviously he's great. I love to watch. Uh, well, favorite players is really difficult. I'd have to say this year, Karatsev, he's my favorite of this year. WTA side. It's got to be on Jabur, mate, I think. She's what? Stole, she's, she's your favourite WTA player? She stole my heart, mate, with the with the song really? and the fact she's played so well. Yeah, mate. Yeah, I think... no, for me, on Jabur's up there. I have BB, so Andreescu. This year, Ons Jabur. No, but in general. I didn't say oh, okay. this year. Okay, all right. Um, I, was gonna, I was going for this year. No, not this no. year, just in general. Okay. Um, And then Coco Goff. I really like Coco. I think she's awesome. I like anyone else. Like, <laughs> there is people. It's hard to like a, we won't put on the spot. Like it's difficult to really yeah, sort of bring I mean, off names just like that. I'm sure if you if I had a list, Sarka, Savantec, I'm I like. Sure yeah, sure. I don't mind. I like Osaka. Eager, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Sviontek. I mean, well, obviously Krajikova. She's one of my like top players. I'm not as big on Krajikova as what you I, is. I, you are. P- really? Bedoza, sorry, Bedoza. That's the one for me. R- Ribakina, she's another one that I'm very, very big on. I uh, really think that she's just, well, got a massive future. She's only 22. Radicano. Yeah, mate. Well, hopefully for the future, she can bring us the goods. That's what. That's all we're hoping. Surely, uh, is Pliskova not making it onto yours? No, it doesn't PC- make it PCB? No, no, done. Next question. <laughs> right, anyway, yeah, let's move away from that one. That was number 16. Mate, I think we're just going to have to start hand-picking them now, to be honest, uh, because otherwise we're going to uh, literally just be going through all Okay, I'll things. do this one now. So number six, do you agree with the Olympics being moved to an all-best-of-three format? Hmm, I don't. I don't agree with it. I don't like it. I don't think... What's the reasoning for it? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I agree. I think it should just. they should have kept it the same. So let's move on from that one. I think it should just be five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, right. This is a good one. Which young player do you think will win three plus majors? Ooh. Really good question. Young, young players as well. How young are we talking? Are we talking 18? No, I think, 20? I think one who's not won one before, 23 years or younger. Uh... I can see Yannick Sinner doing it. I think he's still, you got to remember, he's like 19 at the moment and he, he's competing with the best players on tour in Grand Slams. I think if, his, if parts of his game grow, 
even more. Yeah, we're going to see it. He's going to he's going to grab a slam once the big. I think it's once the bigger players have retired though. More. Yeah, um, I'm gonna probably play it boring. If I'm gonna, you're gonna let me have sit to pass, I think yeah, he's. De- I think he's gonna do it. Yeah. I really yeah, do. Yeah. I, I know so it's not well. working for him right now, but I believe a lot in him. I think he's class. Um, he showed it already in the clay courts that he can play. So sit yep. pass is gonna be my man to win three plus majors, if not a lot more than that. To be honest, right, he's got women, the ability to. Um, women's wise, Savontek's the easy one for me. I done. think um, it's one three. Yeah, but we've already done it once, yeah. But so I don't they're not allowed to win any? Uh, well, I think, well, Kennan's obviously she's already got one as well. I'd like to say Sabalenka, mate. I think that yeah. she has all the ability. Well, she's 23 now. I don't know if that class is in the debate. I think I'm she gonna has I'm going to say Coco Goff. I think Coco Goff's going to win three, at least. She, she, she has all the ability. I'll be surprised if she doesn't, put it that way. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, um, number twenty-eight here. What are your phobias? <laughs> interesting, interesting. Well, phobias, mate. Uh, I'm terrible with heights. Yeah, heights are not a good one for me. Um, really, not good with them, or not good with. I think it's just typical when you have like phobias of, I don't know, like horrible things like snakes and or like more like spot. I don't know spiders. In Are a you way, scared of spiders? I wouldn't say scared. I would, I would catch him. I'd catch him, put it out. So it's not like I won't go near it. It's, it's I think it's a, there's a, there's a fine line, isn't it? It's just like, yeah. is there something that if it came in the room, you would have to leave <laughs> and or jump up on a table or something? <laughs> you got and, George here, pineapple on pizza. <laughs> that's <laughs> the phobia. <laughs> yeah, that's that's your one, isn't it? Uh, Igor says planes, which is actually interesting. Yeah. Because I don't have I don't have a phobia of planes, but I don't like them at all. Um, I'll I'll walk on a plane, and when I walk on, I'll always sort of say a little prayer. Um, really? Yeah. Every time I get on a plane, um, and there's times when I'm sort of before just before takeoff, I have a few moments. To, I'm not really the chatty I'm person that, to everyone drink. around me. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just I'm just sitting there. In the so, zone, kind of thing. Ne- sort of neck in, in like whiskers, like. No, I, I, don't, I don't particularly. I don't, I don't particularly like it. And um, there's a good point here, actually. Uh, Hino, Hino says I do have a phobia of heights. I'm not sure about being close to an edge. Makes no, me mate, feel a I'm, bit anxious. I'm, I'm the, I'm the same with I'm, the planes. I'm in acceptance. The turbulence, I hate. I can't stand turbulence. Oh, listen planes. to this for what's happened to me on a plane. You're never going to believe it. I've been no. struck by lightning. While I'm on a plane. Oh, oh my god! So the wing and people, everyone was throwing up. Uh, apparently, it's not what actually happens. But the plane <laughs> struck. I don't know if it was actually struck by light to this day. Let me know if it. I, I've, I've worked on Google. I'm pretty sure it actually did though. It was on the wing. It was just going up and down. It was terrible. I think we had to land somewhere a bit different. It was oh. an absolute mate. It was just one of them where I it, can't, was, mate, it was I, kind I, of unbearable. <laughs> Like I think my sister and stuff were all throwing up and stuff. I wasn't I throwing can't... up, but I was just, I was just at the time. I was just, I wasn't crying, but I was just, <laughs> I was hiding in my hands. I was like, I just don't want to be here, man. So I just... I, that's why it probably is not help with my fear of planes. And then the other plane I went on recently. Listen to this. I get to my seat. I was with my girlfriend on the plane, and the only seat on the plane there's water dripping down <laughs> on my head. <laughs> so I've literally stood up before we're t- taken off. I'm like, what's going on here? And she was like, oh, it usually happens just when the air con starts going. Um, oh. It'll go away in a minute. And I'm like, you, I can't sit down on this. She was like, it'll go away in a minute. I could, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. I had the whole plane looking at me, standing up, making a commotion. Eventually, they they agreed to move seats to me because I couldn't sit down on it. It was soaking wet. Like The person next no. to me was getting drenched <laughs> from all the dripping. Amazing. So they moved me to another seat, and then they gave me um, – uh, they gave me a, a few beers for free, so I was all right. Oh, I was going to say, in between two fat people, you're like, <laughs> no, <laughs> the no, middle seat a <laughs> in between uh, my 600 pound life, either side. But, uh, mate, yeah, the worst one, I don't know. It, I, I, there's probably people who have had much worse experiences, but I had like a night flight that was flying into, uh, I think it was Leon, Leon maybe, yeah, but anyway. 
Yeah, the King Leon. It was flying. Was it Leon or was it? Yeah, I think it was. Anyway, yeah, I think it was flying into there. Anyway, didn't realize that the the airport is literally slap bang on the on the beach. Pretty much, it's like on the co- literally on the coast. So the, the airport, the, the runway starts where the sea ends, sort of. So it touches, and it was nighttime, and they're like going down for the landing you can hear all the things like like yeah things going out because you're obviously just in and around the sea it's so windy and literally it was going like you're going like i'm like what are we going to land on the wing are we got and it was going like this and then i was just thinking what where are we i could looking out the window it's just dark i can't see anything now i look out the window i'm like that is that water i can see water literally there and i'm thinking we're going to land in the water. We're just going to go in the water. I'm like, this is, I'm like just sitting there. And this, this pilot, I've never landed so hard. It went bang. Everyone went, Oh, <laughs> when it landed. I was like, what are you doing? You gotta land like that. Everybody nearly, I felt the wheels were going to just literally be torn off the plane. Yeah. Um, oh, we had that so I, I, as well. Everybody was just sat there. Was, was like, any clapping then? No, I'm no heart, oh, man, I can't stand the clapping. I, I, don't start me on the clapping. I'm not, I'm, I'm not there to clap people who... Uh, they I clap. No, I never clap. <laughs> if it's on time, I'm one of the people on who time. clap. <laughs> on no, time? If it's early, sorry. If it's early for a bit, I'll clap. Mate, I'm not, I'm not clapping. I don't clap the bus driver when he gets me off of the stop. You, your job is to get me there without dying. That is your job. I'm not clapping you for it. You get paid for that. Anyway, let's move on anyway, to the next question. I know, don't, mate. It right. brings up some horrible emotions, that type uh, of thing. And this is a really good question, actually. Um, wait, have we? I think you deleted one, Ben. What should have been on it? I think I might have by accident. Sorry. I, I've, to... I've got them here anyway. So if you need to uh, go back, sorry. Yeah, you can add one on. Add that one on. But just quickly before that, let's do this one. Right. Would you prefer a fully focused Kyrgios that competes more or the existing carefree version? <laughs> this is a really good question. I like that I can one. reveal it was Liam who sent this one in. Um, ah. And it is a good question. Um, and I've been thinking about it when he sent it, but first time to actually answer it, I don't really want to fully focus Kyrgios, no. I want to see him be himself. I like the free spirit Kyrgios version. There we go, I said it. I do as well. I know it's a bit, <laughs> a bit bad, isn't it? But if he didn't have all of that, no one would even talk. We, we, he wouldn't be. This wouldn't be huh? a conversation, would it? Exactly. He's made a career of being this type of not yeah. focused player, and really, without that, he wouldn't be nowhere near anyone. So, I'm very happy with what he's chosen to do. It's saleable, and like he said in a recent interview, he's never ever going to be someone who trains every day and wins titles. That's just not him. So just stick to being what you are. Embrace the Nick Kyrgios lifestyle and I'm all for it. Yeah. Let me add, the, if this changes, I'm just adding the other one in. I think I accidentally deleted. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, well, let's go on to it anyway next. How yeah. long do you think until the next British Grand Slam winner, men's, do uh, any of the young players even have a chance of winning one with better young players like Sinner on the circuit? Yeah. The reason I asked for this one, because I know who it was from, it's from Liam. He sent the two. Um, so you've done, we're doing his back to back. This is another really good question. Um, sort of break it down. How long do you, th- until you, um, how long do you think until the next British Grand Slam winner? Do any of the young players have even a chance of winning with better players like Sinner on Circuit? I think it's going to be many years. I really do. I think we're going to be looking at a long, 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 long time. I'd say the young 15. players coming through, man, are too good. And British tennis players aren't that great. They don't fill me with that much hope. We've got Jack Draper, looks exciting. Is he really on the level of, say, Yannick Sinner now? No. So probably, I'm going to say something wild. I'm going to say 40 years. I'm going, I think, well, you, as you've gone so big, I was going to say between 15 to 20 years. The reason I say 40 years mm. It's because something needs to change. Um, <laughs> Fred, Fred Berry Mark II comes back. <laughs> no, no, something drastically has to change. Do you know what I mean? In, in, yeah. in the way tennis is viewed in the UK, there's not enough access to courts. 
they just we've got so much money we just spend on say other sports and things like football. Why not prioritize some of that spend for for tennis? I'm angry. No, because honestly, there needs to be more. We need some more funding. We need to encourage it more. The grassroots roots of tennis is not good enough in the UK. We're not bringing enough group, good players through. And you can't tell me there's not good tennis players out there because I guarantee they are. They're just not getting the right opportunities. Um, it's been a bit of a, a sport where only the rich can play. We need to try yeah. and change that. We need to get some people from working class backgrounds involved in tennis because I can guarantee you, I bet they're class. I really do. Some of the poorest people are some of the best players in tennis, no doubt about it. And we need to encourage that more in Britain. Well, the problem, like I sort of alluded to earlier, is if you really want to become one of those top players, you better have some backing from someone because you're going to have to travel a hell of a lot around the country, even around Europe, around everywhere, and you're going, someone's going to have to foot, foot the bill. Mum and dad, if they're not footing it, then the LTA are going to have to foot it. and. They all seem quite rich to me, man. Like private schools in the UK, they come from that. Even no offense to Rally Khanu, she's come from. It seems to me like a relatively wealthy family. She went private school, didn't she? Um, she's done this and that. It's not the the norm, the norm, the run of the the run of the mill type of people, which are which I would say you sort of get in football sometimes. It's too elitist a sport, and that needs to change before we see more English players coming through. Yeah, well. We'll wait and see. Who knows? Maybe Emma Raducanu can be the next one. Maybe this is just the catalyst that she needed. I would love that. I tell you, I would yeah. absolutely. I'm telling. I'm telling you now. If Raducanu was to win a Grand Slam, I think that she could potentially become one of the highest earning athletes yeah. in the world. Like I overtake Osaka. Yeah. Uh, next question. It's an interesting one. Um, I'm sure you know who <laughs> actually suggested it. Mr. It's Rock. Elton John or Billy Joel? It's a very hard one as well for me because two amazing artists here, two I'm very fond of. Elton John with all of his classic songs. Billy Joel, definitely some other classic ones. They, they're good for different occasions. What are you doing to me, uh, Thomas Rock? I think the one with the more classic ones, really, it'd have to be Elton John, I think. Billy yeah. Joel, though, I think he suits suits my voice. If I'm going to sing a song, I'd probably have to sing a Billy Joel rather than sing an Elton John. What, are you going to sing it now? Nah. Well, I did. I already did one, didn't oh, I? Yeah. Vienna. Vienna yeah. was Billy Joel, mate. So I'm going Elton John as well. I'm not going to explain. I'm going to go for Elton John. <laughs> I loved him in that Christmas advert when he was on the piano. Oh, mate. He likes it on the old piano. Tinkering those old, <laughs> tinkering with the old ivories, mate. That's his thing. <laughs> Loves it. So, like, moving on. I think he'll be very fond of our uh, setup here today as well. The pink and yellow with a bit of confetti. Let's move to number one now. And that was, what was the first tennis match you guys remember watching? Wow. Mate, uh, do you want to go first? I don't know how we're going to do this because I was trying to. I knew someone sent it in earlier and I was trying to rack my brain. And I think I racked it back all the way to 1995 to Wimbledon. Wimbledon was probably the only thing I was really watching when I was, a. Uh, well, I'm going to give the game away now of how old I am, which I do I really want to do. <laughs> so, yeah, in... 95 i was 10 so around that time was when i started really I'd, I'd catch it on the tv when there was big championships and that was when sampras was sort of in his swing yeah it was the big the big one and he he beat even isovich in the semi-finals in five sets and it was like a a massive thing and he had to play becker in the final i don't really remember much about it I just remember Sampras and uh, just his, just the way that sort of his aura on Is the court. Is it not Tim Henman? 12 Travel 21's asking. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. I mean, Tim Henman is a part of it, though. <laughs> Tim Henman is the reason that you sort of get involved in it because there's all the hype around it. Uh, but it was just on. Uh, he actually went out to Sampras. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in that year. But okay. it was just. I, I can't really remember that match, 
But I remember the back end of the tournament because he played Boris Becker in the final and yep. won the thing. And I remember that was such a big thing at the time, Sampras beating Becker. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's just an, two legends of the game going at it and two Wimbledon legends as well because Boris Becker, the youngest ever Wimbledon champion, as we know, and somebody who could play with both hands as well, as we know. Uh, and Sampras, well, just an absolute legend. And that just what won, sort of won me over on the, on the Sampras thing. I mean, Agassi was in the semi-final on the other side then. I think he was playing... One let me, second, let me check. He was playing... Uh, yeah, he played Boris Becker and Sampras played Ivan Isovic. So how mad is it that Ivan Isovic... All those years later, I think it was what, six years later, managed to win uh, via a wild card in that in in the same thing. So, yeah, I mean, mate, that's just going back so many years. I, I, I think the quality on the TV must have been dreadful back then. <laughs> Barely so, could see the ball. In more recent years, which is going to be my answer, hard to really identify a match. But I can say the, the first tennis match I went to, which is quite a good one, um, 2011, ATP finals, I watched Songa versus Nadal. Uh, that's one I really remember. It was amazing. So, oh, you'd be surprised. Probably at the time, I don't think I was even really cheering for Rafa too much. <laughs> Songa's a fan like, favourite, mate. Yeah, I used to really, I, I was quite neutral. I remember watching it just thinking, oh, I just want to watch the tennis. It was amazing. Uh, from that day onwards, I loved tennis. I really did. Um, didn't really play it as much afterwards, but I used to always keep an eye on it and watch little bits. More recent, like I remember, obviously a lot of the Wimbledon and stuff, and then ITV4 watching Roland Garros. I used to always watch that every year. So let's move on. Yeah, um, mate. So I know well. we're, we're definitely taking a lot long time, <laughs> mate. Well, this is, a, is this is a long one, which I'm going to try and do as quick as possible. Wow. So build the perfect player and the worst player. This is tough. Where perfect do you player. start? You always start for me with a serve. So let's just do serve, forehand, backhand. Let's keep it very simple. Because if you were to do lobs, I would well, have Andy Murray. I was, well, I was going to say serve, forehand, backhand, l like passion on the court, like that sort of thing. Okay. Like, it's passion, like, or... passion, Rafa passion. Nadal, forehand, Del Potro, backhand, I'm going to take Djokovic's backhand, and I'm going to take Isner's serve. Done. Andy Mental. Murray's lobs. I think Mental, you got Rafa. Yeah. All right. That's not what I picked. I would have picked... Mental Djokovic. I would have picked serve Federer. Over surprised. John Isner. Man, I'm nah, having the John Isner serve. Nah, I'm going to him down. It's too, not consistent enough. Uh, and plus, doesn't trouble the, the big players, really. They they work it out. Uh, I'm going to go backhand. I'm going to go stand the man. Forehand. It's got to be Rafa. And then... Uh, what else do we have? Passion. My forehand wasn't Rafa, by the way. It was Del Potro. Robin Harsa, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably Passion, it's got to be Rafa. Mate, I might have Karatsev as the forehand, actually. <laughs> Go on, <laughs> Kara. Sure. He's going into my one. Players, my player will absolutely demolish yours. I reckon it would be a double what bagel. What my player wanna, versus your player will double bait. I want to. I want to throw. I just want to throw an extra one in there. Uh, smash as well, because you got to have a, a, a iconic smashes in the game. Because uh, we were seeing some players uh, being thrown in there, just like uh, Sampras. For me, he has to be in there at some point. So I'm Sampras have the Berrettini smash. I don't think he misses one. <laughs> I'm talking about in recent years. I would take the Berrettini smash. I love it. Love it. Yes. Yeah, so, well, I'd have not Djokovic's. I would have the Rafa passion because he's got to be in there. I've got to have all the big three in there on mine. Uh, I think yeah. that is the sort of the perfect player for me. It combines everything all worst in player, one. I don't really want to do the worst player. <laughs> I feel like it's what? harsh. How? I would just How have you even do it? Benoit oh. Pair's mentality rivaled with Sarah Rani serve. Um, and then... Chapo's ball toss. Chapeau's yes. ball toss. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, I don't want to be harsh on anybody. I know, but. it's difficult. I don't really want to say negative. There's no, none of them are that bad, to be honest, where you think they're all, they're they're all, worth they all could beat us. Probably my, my backhand. <laughs> me, the worst player, just me. <laughs> Done. My gas tank. <laughs> yeah. Put that on there. Uh, 23. 
if you had to take a certain player's cringeworthy antics, which ATP WTA player would it be? This one is just, it picks itself, isn't it? I don't know if we're going to pick the same person, but I'm going Shapovalov. Him at Wimbledon, sort of egging on the crowd against Djokovic. I was cringing so much on that watch along. It was pretty, if I had to take anything, it'd have to just be that. It's just certainly the most cringeworthy moment I've ever seen. It was, well, I think that's weird. No, but I think if you had to take it, that like if you had to embody yeah, it. Yeah, I know, but I'd, have to, I'd just take it. Because probably I would do that, get the crowd so going. I thought you were going to. I thought like you. It. I thought you'd be Djokovic, mate. I see you much more like that type of player, like just to try and get under players' skin. That you would just be doing like a lot of come ons, just to just. Dude, that's not cringeworthy. There was part of me. I'm not going to lie, and it'll probably annoy a lot. I of find us. this thing from Djokovic cringeworthy. I think he's just making a thing. No, but it's, do you not find that cringeworthy? Yeah, it's just a thing now. It's not. It may be at the start, but now it's a thing. That's that's it. He yeah. just made a uh, and like eating the grass. Is that cringeworthy? No, he just he did it. Now he does it every time. So it's just there was part of me that I was going to say that at the start, Leighton Hewitt used to really bug me. <laughs> he won me over, but he he used to. I don't know. He, the way he was on court used to really annoy me, and I don't know what it was, but I really. He became one of my. I actually love watching him play these days. But he used to be like, "Come on, come on!" After everything, and I just think, "Oh no, just stop, please stop!" After every point, "Come on, come on!" I'm like, "No, stop, stop doing it." It was just doing my head in. I couldn't hear that. Come on, any more time. So, so that's, that's the antic you would take. Yeah, mate. I guess so. Come Fair on. Enough. Let's move on. And this is probably one of my favourites. So I've left it till last. Um, it's from yours, yours sincerely, Thomas Rott. Um, and it is a bit weird, but it's a great question. So if there's a shampoo bottle with a small <laughs> amount of product left, do you just throw it out or do you mix it with water <laughs> to stretch the last amount? And I'm fascinated to know what you're going to say to this one. Oh, I mate, really am. Always mix it. Do you? Every time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything, mate. I always get the last dregs out of it. If there's a little bit of soap left in the thing, the little dispenser. I always put a little bit more water in. And then the trouble is, when it gets low again, you add more and you're essentially just pumping water on your head. Like, like, come on. No, I don't go to that extreme. But with the shower gel or the shampoo, yeah, I'll always put, I'll just get a little bit of water. You've got to get a little bit. You've got to get it out. Like, I feel like that bit's probably the best bit because usually I put a bit more on. It froths it up a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it froths it up. Shake it up a bit. Yeah, no, I just love it, man. Especially the shower gel more so than the shampoo because you just go wild with it. I Um, love it. But the one thing I have noticed is the companies now, they make it harder and harder to get the top off. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Some of them are sealed in Is there, mate. Is that a mate. ploy to make you then buy more shampoo? Yeah, mate, I think so. They must make, I don't know, I'd love to estimate, but how it's much like the, more money they make by making it difficult to take the top of the shampoo bottle off. Well, let me put this one to you then, because this was something that used to be done in my household when I was younger. When the ketchup bottle gets low and there's that little bit at the, at the end that you can't even, the whole thing's squeezed so much, you can't even get that last little bit out. What do you do? Do you just try and open it up, stick a knife in? You still can't get the bits around the edge. Do you cut it open? Do you try and get in there? What do you do? I, I take it off and then I'll just mm. like give it a little pop, 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 and then it will come out. But the problem is if it's that gooey sort of watery stuff, which I've noticed sometimes in ketchup specifically. you got to shake it. it. You can't really shake it because there's not enough to really shake. So I have been guilty before of just throwing it away because I can't be dealing with all the wateriness. Oh, mate, but, wow. It's a bit different. With well, the what we what we used to do in my house, I know that they always used to just like just a touch of vinegar in there, mate. Just pop a little bit of vinegar in there, shake it up a bit. Don't worry, mate. You clean that right out. Really? There you go. Little uh, little tip. Well, most of it's vinegar anyway in uh, in ketchup, so it doesn't really change the taste that much. Just a little bit more vinegar, especially if you have a few chips, mate. Well, not if you're in America, because then they're crisps of chips but uh, fries, yeah. yeah fries if you have some fries man then don't <laughs> worry then uh just <laughs> have some i think they call it vinegar you got me not saying <laughs> destroy the bottle and get everything from inside yeah literally <laughs> he's not messing around 
But um, yeah, it's very interesting. We've got yeah, twelve trump children saying put the ketchup bottle upside down first, then try the knife or another appropriately shaped implement, uh, and then the vinegar trick. Yeah, I like it. See, you don't like you don't it. just give up on it. No, straight away. Never you always, give up. You try and get the remaining bit out. You don't let these companies win. Um, it can be difficult to do, but sometimes it's important. I think it's good for your maybe for your another mental health. Question, another question as well. With the the question of like the squeezy bottle, uh, do you do you prefer the squeezy bottle or the glass bottle for your uh, like a ketchup or a sauce? The squeezy one. Okay, but then you can't you can't squeeze the glass one. So you have to do that go that, that keep tapping. I can't stand yeah, okay. the one. So, and then oh, oh oh just ruined it. Oh all the ketchups come out. Oh great, now I've got ketchup everywhere. What a nightmare. I only wanted a little bit and I've got the whole plate full of ketchup. <laughs> How many times have people done that? Oh and, and then they the same noise. Oh look, well, oh that's happened. They've ruined my meal. Great. Like it's worse than your... the salt. Salt's the worst. Oh, it's not coming out. Let me just take the let me just take it out and I'll sprinkle a little bit. Let's go no, then come. <laughs> mate i've done it i've done it. i've done literally like a, a, a similar thing before but with a, a pe you know like the pepper like grinder yeah. thing. i was uh, just starting to make like a, a pasta dish for myself and my girlfriend and this this plastic pasta grinder that we had i was just like it's always like getting like loose and i'm just like ah oh, don't worry i'll just i'll just do it harder yeah that harder is better and then just suddenly bah, peppercorns the whole thing is just peppercorns yeah and what no, do you do that you can't eat it that, no, it's the whole meal like especially, you... i think salt's the worst because you can't i oh, know it's done it's done it's salt. just you ruin the meal you can't eat it i've actually tried before after putting too much salt in a meal or my mum did it actually i don't even take the, the the blame for it it was my mum's fault she put two by accident <laughs> she's putting some salt and do you know them little not the one where you shake like the little in the, the tubs like the plastic tubs where you, yeah, yeah. you need to measure it yeah, she yeah. put too much in. So we got down to the table and she said, oh, I've got to just say, I think I might have ruined the dinner. My hand slipped. I tried to stomach it for a little bit. It was actually a risotto. It's impossible. Like, you can't like, you can't have two salted food. It just like, makes like, drink, like, like drinking seawater. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, oh, I did a real bad one with this. I didn't realise that when you buy some of those uh, spices that say, oh, this is like a lemon and herb spice. The, their majority of the thing that they have in there is salt. Yeah. So I, I pretty much, I, I think I emptied like half the sachet of this thing. I'd put like a load of chicken in there, a load of veg, loads of stuff, and just ruined it by pouring all of this thing. It was nearly unbearable. It was just like, ah. <laughs> Girlfriend was nearly threw up, I think, when she <laughs> took a out of it. <laughs> Read the packaging, people. Yeah. And I think on that note, we'll wrap it up. That is the last question. So well oh. done to everyone who sent the questions in. But now we're going to open it up to the floor, the GTL floor. We'll play the button for the 200 um, episode. And now is your chance. Everyone in the chat, if you have any questions, we're going to try and make them quick fire. So don't make them too long-winded. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. We've been speaking for well over an hour. So we're just going to do some quicker type of questions. So send them in the live chat. And while you're waiting, I think it's only apt that we get the Ons Jabur button while you send your questions in. It's her, it's her, it's her. We're talking about Ons Jabur. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. We got a bit of Ons Jabur in there. And we <laughs> like got it. that. So first question. Um, well, we've got several questions here. I'm not sure I can answer them all. Shavam, do you think Penguin will beat Papua New Guinea <laughs> under 19 hockey team in soccer? It will be a tight match for sure. Um I'll be question? honest. <laughs> this is a very <laughs> obscure question. Yes, I think England will yes. win. Um, the cool one Messi or Ronaldo Ronaldo Messi 100% you saw me with my Barcelona top uh, the other day Messi's the greatest player uh, not Ronaldo whatever we've got Grafie. Pirini green tea or black tea black tea all the way 
What's black tea? So just sort of normal tea. I think that's what he means. Yeah, okay, you can put yeah. milk in it, I guess, but just not green nah, tea. That's that's not that's not black tea if you put milk in it. That's yeah, a, but mate, I'm, I'm, it's a a white tea. Can, yeah, but it starts off black until you put the milk in. It's not green tea, is it? So you like green tea? I'm not a fan of green nah, tea. I'm not. I'm, I'm I know not it, a big my girlfriend fan. drinks green tea. I, lemon and I can have like a lemon and ginger, a bit of honey in there. Don't mind that. Okay, let's keep going. George, yeah. how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? About three kilos. Okay. Midfield Maestro, <laughs> Medvedev, Zverev or Sitsipas? Um, Medvedev. Sitsipas. Have you guys ever legit legitimately pissed each other off with a tennis debate before? Many times. M many times. One what springs to mind was in a pub. Ben uh. was telling me he would rather go to Nottingham to watch tennis rather than going <laughs> on a plane and go to Spain. And we had a long debate about that. Why don't we go to Spain? It's probably not much different in money. And we get a bit of sun. It'll take just as much time to get on a plane than to travel up to Nottingham. And we looked on the maps. And guess what? I was right. He was wrong. Created a bit of an uproar. And I stand by that debate. He did annoy me on that day. Next thing you know, plane got struck by lightning. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm scared. <laughs> Gala, what's your favourite episode of the podcast you've ever done? Wow. If massive. you're talking watch-alongs or podcasts, I think let's answer the question specifically. So it is just the podcast. So that's the 200 episodes we've done. Is there a favourite episode? For me, it's Gal Falkenberg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the greatest podcast we've ever done. I think this one might be up there with one of my favourites, mate, to be honest. I think so the, like, the, the number 200 is definitely one of the best ones. It's been a great one, no doubt. Okay. I'm going to have to look through some of them. I'm going to have to actually look through a list of some of the ones just so I can know the list of the podcasts we've actually done. Just because we've... It's a good I like, question. I like some of the first ones we actually did, though, because our gags were actually original in some of the first ones. We've rehashed the same gags for about, like, seven, eight, nine so times. Wait, you say that. You see Risk in a draw pre in a draw preview. You say, oh, that could be a Risk. Might go for her. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't stand it. Schwartzman. Well, how, many times, how, many... how many times have you said Schwartzman's small? How many times have you said, Akuda <laughs> Matava? Well, mate, we've both done it. This is the no, problem. I'm not, I'm not as bad as you. You repeat them an awful lot more. Well, this is what I mean. So they're original at the start. So when we had our first goat debate that literally lasted about five minutes and somehow we labeled the video that that was a pretty good one that was the hundred subscribers yeah, that mate there was a hundred subscribers we've, 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 had a great one. we've had a lot of good podcasts man but i've liked some of the more recent ones i thought they've been pretty funny um yeah, yeah if I'm mate, honest. There's, there's been some good ones anyway um, good 12 travel 21 which other sports were you watching the olympics i'm someone who likes watching everything all of them i, I like watching the obscure kind of things like badminton. I think that's fun. I the like table curling. tennis. Yeah, all of that. I even watch archery. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't mind a bit of archery. The main archery. one I, I, I love to watch, though, is the 100 meter sprint in the men's. I feel like that's the, the sort of the pinnacle of it, the whole thing. I, I quite Although, like the pole, pole vault. I yeah. quite like the uh, javelin. Javelin's always a good one. I actually like the triathlon and the long distance running as well. I think that's really fun watching how they throw in, throw in through the pack. Cycling, rowing, we're GB. Love those ones. There's not basically, we've not really answered the question too because we like a lot of them. Yeah, um, yeah, we biggest love them all. pet peeve. What annoys you the most, mate? What, on this the is, podcast or no, just in general? What's one of your biggest pet peeves, mate? Oh. mate, I can't even think of a good one right now. But there's probably loads. That's what I'm I was going to say. I'm, on, I'm on such the a frustrated person. Like a lot of things annoy me. Uh, well, mate, that's why I thought it'd be easier to uh, put it to. Pet peeve on the podcast. Okay, on the, the podcast big... then. Uh, forgetting to put my mic on correctly or unmuting myself at the start of a stream. That's probably one of my big pet peeves. My big, my, mine is probably just say, saying the wrong words, just getting muddled up with my words. I just can't stand it. It winds me up so much. There was a time when I think we was doing, um, it was before Madrid, and I was in Barcelona, and every pod, every Barcelona podcast, I was saying Madrid instead of Barcelona. <laughs> and then we went to Madrid, and I was saying Barcelona. So stuff like that just wind me up. I know I'm doing it, but I just that's, just that's part of the beauty of the pod, mate. Yeah. I think everybody knows, but everybody just accepts it. It's great. 
Anyway, um, of course. Next. Any others? So many questions. Oh gosh, I don't even know where to think, uh, mate. I've I've lost my spot quickly. Dylan saying so happy skateboarding finally made the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, that's, cool. that's interesting. Uh, great new sport. All those Tony Hawk fans out there, but they'll be like, there we go. It. Milos, did you guys go to college? Um, and do you regret it? I went to university. Don't regret it. Best years of my life. I didn't go to university, uh, and no, I don't think I regret it either. I mean, there's part of me. I went, I, I left school after A levels, and then just went to the Alps, and I worked in the Alps in a ski resort for uh, six months. That was sort of my uni. Uh, it was great fun. It was sort of that was like my you just living in a hotel with like 30 40 other people all 18 to like 30 years old all having a great time snowboarding skiing drinking yep. yeah great fun and that, that was like your uni yeah that was my uni in a sense Gordon Fury or Joshua Fury Fury uh Thomas Rock have you ever been attacked by a swan um not fully Close. attacked by one Close. but I've been charged by a swan playing golf yeah. The ball was near it, and I had golf. to go get the ball. Yeah, there were swans. I was built by the on the golf course. Yeah, mate, there's a pond. You never played golf with a pond with what, swans they, in. They have swans in in the golf course. Yeah, they? and there was wow. a swan, and it was just, <laughs> it was right near my ball because I wasn't very good. Um, so <laughs> it was in the, it was to, in the lake. It was. Uh, yeah, it wasn't in the it lake. Was, it, was just, <laughs> it was sitting off the swan and swan. I had to go <laughs> over to the ball, <laughs> and then the ages. Got mate, it started charging gear. me, so I had to run off, and then I come back to my ball afterwards. So that was well, annoying. Really near its nest, mate. That's why. Charging bolt. How much time on average did you did you spend to make each button? On average, well, that's an interesting one to make each button. Some of them longer than others. Some of them, literally, it just finishes a stream, and I have ten minutes to make a button, and I have to make it within. I don't know. I make it and have to export it from Final Cut, and it's like five minutes. Like the can you believe it? The Ons Jabur button, one of the quickest buttons I've ever made. But look what happens. So Tom Lazar, best tennis video game ever. I've never played one on PlayStation or Xbox. I'm only ever on my phone. Oh, you're a tennis, mate. So for me, it's Tennis Clash. I play that quite a bit. Ah, mate, I used uh, to be I used to be the best on I say the best. The best that I'd ever played. Any there's nobody I'd ever met in person that could beat me on virtual tennis. And I think it was on, I can't even remember if it was on, I think it might have been on Dreamcast. I don't know if it was on PlayStation. It might have been on PlayStation anyway. I had Dreamcast anyway at some point. Mate, that one, I used to go online. This is how good I was online. I remember one of my mates and he was just like, he was not bad at it. He was playing on it. Are you, was was like, you better than me at Tennis Clash? It was a, it was on that par, mate. It was it was literally it was ridiculous. Like my mate went online and played some guy who wasn't too bad. He was playing on it and he was losing five love. And I was like, "Give it here, seven five win." Like, and that, that's literally <laughs> what it was like. I was just I just knew every tactic for every shot on everything. So he was I basically every... too good at that game. Yeah, mate, it was ridiculous. English food or Italian food? Come on, pathetic question. Italian food, of course. Why are you thinking yeah, about it? I know, I'm Mate, I would literally have just kicked you <laughs> off the podcast. Uh, Eddie, what does your employer sa- think about you guys openly saying you're hopefully eventually going to quit your day job? <laughs> Very good they're question. All, they're all for it. They're all for it. We're terrible at our day jobs. No, I'm joking. No, I'm joking. No, I'm we joking. don't actively say that. We obviously do our best day- job we can do in the, in the daytime. But when we're not working, we do this as a hobby. So I think they're pretty cool with it. If I'm honest, yeah. we, they know about the podcast, they'll support it. So, yeah, no, it's just there. Um, what is your favorite first round match in the Olympics draw? Um, women's or men's on the women's, it's the Muguruza one. What's it, Muguruza playing Udamentova? Yeah, I think that's the, that's the, that's one what I really like. Oh, yeah. Apart from on the men's, Andy Murray Felix. Uh, I thought it was the Rublev one for me. Who's he playing? Nishikuri, Rublev yeah. Nishikuri for that's me. Uh, Abad, there. How many licks? Wait, I'm not, how's this going to go? Would it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center or to of a Tootsie Pop? Uh, this is an American thing, must be. I'm not uh, sure what that I, means. But I'd go with. I know the Tootsie Roll is it not? A, is it not a dance? It's just a thing. It's just like a 
thing you eat. Oh, okay. I would okay. go with 52. 100. There you go. My licking power is not great. Um, <laughs> Michael, JG, how did you feel when England lost to Italy in the Euros? Mm. Initially, slightly disappointed. Got home. My dad had an Italian flag flying around and was very happy. So I was quite happy for him. And Punched at the him. end of the day, half and half is what it is. England, they couldn't do it. I was a bit, I was disappointed. I must admit, yeah, nah, on the way home, I was a bit sad. But then I was still giving it to some of my friends about about Italy. I bet it was. Uh, I can see him down the pub now. JG was just like. He was there in his England top with all of his England mates, and they were just like, "Oh, the penalty, the penalty!" And they were like, "Oh no, no, no!" And then suddenly, JG lifts off the England top. There's an Italy one. He's like, "Yeah, we won it! Come on!" No, it, it was it was home. sad, man. It was a bit sad. Um, <laughs> Thomas saying, "Can we do a Gal Falkenberg follow-up? Potentially, yeah. That could be another podcast. Get her on Maybe the we'll pod, get, her on. get her on the pod. That's the get her on the pod." Gail on the pod. What's the Gail. worst aspect of living in the UK? The weather and the yeah. food. Well, yeah, I mean, it goes, it's, it's extremes. It goes from the worst weather to now for me, like the hottest weather, which is still the worst weather. I need it in the middle somewhere. Give me like 23 degrees. That's perfect. 12 travel 21. We're still at 9.48, mate. So we're nine minutes behind on the questions here, by the way. What? So <laughs> it's a bit mad. <laughs> oh my, Why do Italian on. restaurants serve black pepper in those giant four foot grinders? Great question. I'm yeah, not sure. Jam, jam, Is there a reason jam, for it <laughs> apart from it visually looking good? Jam, Maybe jam, it's just easier to have to keep filling it up. Yeah. I don't know. You are Beppe. Um, when did Love 15 Dominic team originate at the Australian Open? We just kept no. saying yeah. the same saying. Uh, no, US, US Open, Open. sorry, US so. Open. Um, what other YouTubers do you guys like? Um, I, I watch a lot of, sort of West Go through your channels. top five or top nah, three. Nah, I can't, mate. We don't have time. Top, I'm just gonna, top, top three. I don't have a top three. I'm just going to say one I like. The West Ham fan channel. I watch a lot of their stuff. All right. That's you nice. You three, though. Well, I thought you were going to say top three anyway. Or just A3. Well, the top three that I probably watch are, oh God, I want to say Bad Friends podcast which is uh, two American comedians, hilarious. And second one would be the Believe You Me podcast, Michael the Count Bisbing, legend, UFC, Hall of Famer. Uh, that's another comedy UFC podcast. N number three, I don't know. I quite like uh, True Geordie in a way. I don't yeah. know. I like what he does. I watch it. Yeah, I watch a few of his bits and pieces. So, yeah, I think he'll probably be up there as well. Yep, so I'm trying to get through because I'm trying to get to, I'm trying yeah, to get yeah. to the normal time. We're ah. ten minutes behind at the moment. Look at um, John Silk suddenly arrives. Oh, like, near the him, mate. <laughs> uh, what is the most heartbreaking moment you've both witnessed in a tennis match? Rafa losing the semi final to Djokovic semi in, in Roland Garros. That is actually the most heartbreaking moment ever for me. Well, for me, I know it's very early on, but probably Tim Hemman losing after the rain delay to Goran Ivanisevic when he was finally going to get into that Wimbledon final. That I've moved a bit bad. forward. Uh, right. Have you ever been spammed on YouTube? Yes, multiple times. I'm guy called um, Thomas Rock keeps spamming the live chats. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, we love Thomas Rock. Yeah, of course we have. There's tons of spammers out there. Uh, it's just what so you get. Kodak, did either of you consider playing tennis seriously? I was never good enough. Started far too late. Yeah, mate. No, it was never. It was never a reality. It was just always a uh, pipe dream. If GTA become your full time job, do you think you'd still do some accountancy as a hobby? <laughs> I like that one. That's one of my favourite questions, <laughs> mate. The the thing is, yes, we would because. Someone's going to have to do the accounts for GTL. Yeah, but it wouldn't be a hobby. <laughs> it would it's still not, be well, fun. no, it would still be work. It would still be work, but we would yeah. still be doing it. So, yes, we would still be doing it as a hobby, but it would still be part of GTL accounts. Maybe there'd be somebody else coming. Mate, can we get someone else to do GTL accounts? Well, live Tootsie Pops don't exist in England. No, they don't. Nah. Um, come to CA. Is that California? Yeah, so, mate. That's that's where I'd love to go there, man. My family are there. I've got San Diego relatives. I've got like uh, relatives of my dad's side living there. I need to go out there and visit. 
Richard Berry, how did you guys meet? We met at work um, doing accountancy. How fun's that? Yeah. Woohoo. Jordan, is Djokovic settling the gunk debate? He certainly is right now. Um, can't really dispute it. I've tried my best many times, but it's not hard to really say otherwise. Settling the gold debate. Um, and there we go. I think All I'm right. now finally up to date. How are we doing, John? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, man. Um, Take your time. You'll have, you have to watch through <laughs> some of it because there's been some good moments already. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think we've actually done just under two hours, one hour 54. Thanks to all of your questions before. Thanks to all of the questions here. Um, it's been a good one. It really has. If you yeah. like this kind of content, let us know in the comments. Uh, we do try and read all of them. Leave us a like on this video as well. It really helps us out. Subscribe if you're new. And I'm sure we can do another similar video like this if you enjoyed it. If not, we'll just never do it again. Uh, and then that'll be that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's good fun. 300, like George says, epic podcast, guys. Appreciate that, buddy. One of the patrons. Appreciate everybody who has signed up as part of our Patreon. It really does help out our channel, helps us, well, discover the dream that will be one day that we will do this full time. You guys helping support the channel. We will be able to bring you even more content, even more buttons, even more songs if we don't have another job we're doing. That's yep. just guaranteed. So, yeah, all of you guys, if you want to sign up to the Patreon, it's as little as £3 a month. I mean, one of these Peronis a month, and I've done three of them on this pod. Exactly that, mate. And hopefully we'll be doing some of these sort of uh, Q&As with just the patrons. They won't be two hours long, but <laughs> we'll do maybe a quick 20 minutes, 30 minutes of questions every now and then as well. So it's the best place to be. Definitely. Good to see a lot of people enjoyed it. That's great. Um, we're going to love you and leave you now. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you guys probably tomorrow for some more action. Or if not tomorrow, the next day. Probably the next day. Oh, yeah. You're, you're busy tomorrow. Aren't you? I'm busy tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. No worries. See you guys soon. See you later, guys. Thanks, everyone.